25 seasons. This season or next season is 25 seasons? 25 seasons next year. Next year. Our best year. And, and every year is the best year. Judge Judy is arguably the best judge show in television history. Although that statement is completely opinionated, you can't argue the fact that it is the most legendary judge show on TV. If you mention anything to someone about courtroom TV, their head is immediately going to pop into Judge Judy's courtroom. Which is what brings us great sadness in presenting this list of 10 reasons why Judge Judy is officially ending. If you're a big fan of her show, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Now let's jump into the list. Don't worry, Judith Scheinlin, aka Judge Judy, is not just some actress hired for entertainment purpose while the real judges do the actual work behind the scenes. Nope, she's the bona fide real deal. She earned her Juris Doctor degree and passed the New York State Bar in 1965, when she was just 23 years old. She subsequently worked as a lawyer before Mayor Ed Koch appointed her as a judge in the criminal court. By 1986, she was promoted to supervising judge and worked specifically in Manhattan's family court. After presiding over 20,000 cases, she retired in 1996 at the age of 54, but her career was just getting started. They're all entertaining. Every year is the best. But what ha So that's your last year? Well, I've had a 25-year long marriage with CBS. Mm -hmm. Judge Judy is now a household name, a cornerstone of dramatic courtroom television, no-nonsense slapdowns, and funny YouTube compilations. Hot Bench doesn't quite have the same ring to it, but that is almost what we got. According to Miriam Webster, a hot bench is a judge that actively questions lawyers presenting appellate arguments. However, the producers advised against the name, as it would confuse viewers who were not familiar with legal terms. They just wanted something punchy and attention-grabbing. Judy then brainstormed the rather corny Judy Justice before settling on the iconic Judge Judy. We think she made the right decision, don't you? Judy's TV empire is Hot Bench, where she's chosen a new judge for the panel. Starting Tuesday, it'll be former New York jurist Michael Corriero. We started out as young lawyers together. Reality courtroom television was quite popular throughout the 80s, thanks primarily to the People's Court. But interest was beginning to wane by the mid-90s. Both the People's Court and Divorce Court, which had been sporadically airing since 1957, came to an end in 1993. Jones and Jury, a replacement of sorts for the People's Court, ended after just one season in 1995. Things were not looking too good for the reality courtroom drama. Enter Judge Judy, which premiered in September of 1996 and became a quick success. The People's Court returned the following year, Divorce Court was brought back in 1999, and a host of imitators including Judge Mathis and Judge Joe Brown soon followed. You know, having enjoyed these two fabulous careers, um, I know that I'm a lawyer. I think, still think like a lawyer. Judge Judith Scheinlin has had a profound impact on civil discourse. Her work and legacy were honored by the USC Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism, who built the Scheinlin Forum in the Wallace Annenberg Hall. The forum also honors Judge Judy's husband, Judge Jerry Scheinlin. The forum is meant to promote intelligent civil discourse and also serves as the host of the USC Annenberg Debate Series. It's a great way to honor Judge Judy's career and legacy, and it's a fantastic space for young adults to learn the value in complex but civil, principled, and morally ethical discourse. Hall is now called the Shinelin Foundation, thanks to a generous donation by the popular personality. Well, she says there needs to be a place where people from all walks of life can... Judge Judy may air on television for our entertainment, but the cases and rulings are 100% genuine. Even before she enters the studio, Judge Judy has a firm grasp of the contents and relevant information of the case, as producers send her the pertinent details of each case before she shows up on set. She reads the necessary information at home before traveling to Los Angeles to film each episode. And it may surprise you to hear that, while the cases are real, the audience is not. The audience is often composed of a 
aspiring actors who are paid a low hourly rate to sit in the room and look intently interested in the case. Where do we sign up? That it is, in fact, his dog doing the deed. I'm ready to hear you, sir. The evidence, Your Honor, oh, oh, undisputed oh, DNA oh, evidence. When you think of Judge Judy, what do you see in your mind? While her hair and stern expressions are undoubtedly memorable, it's a particular item in her wardrobe that has become the most iconic. The lace collar has always been part of Judy's wardrobe, dating all the way back to her time in the family court. She bought her first lace collar in Greece while vacationing with her husband and she decided to incorporate it into her professional wardrobe. She later admitted that she wore the cute collar to disarm and throw off litigants, as they would let their guard down after seeing such a sweet looking judge. Needless to say, they would be hit with a major curveball once she began speaking. The old car. In July of last year. And between April 18th and July, where was the car? Sitting in my grandma's. In your possession? Yeah. And then you sold it? Yes. To whom? Judge Judy knows what she wants, and she's not afraid to go after it. And that's true in her personal as well as professional life. According to a profile in DuJour, Judy met Jerry Scheinlin only three weeks after divorcing her first husband, Ronald Levi. They met at a bar, and Judy literally walked up to him and put her finger on his face, asking, And who is this? Lovely story, isn't it? She later proposed to him and firmly told him to pick a date. And despite some initial hesitation on his part, he finally agreed and they married in the late 70s. Despite a brief divorce in 1990, they have remarried and remained married ever since. She also has five children, two biological and three stepchildren through Jerry, and more than a dozen grandchildren. Thank you. You know, the last thing, you're still doing TV. You know, have you given a thought to retirement? When are you going to retire? I don't look old enough to retire. I love that, you know. <laughs> Judge Judy not only revitalized interest in reality courtroom TV, it also gave the genre a quality that had never been seen before. In 2013, it won the Emmy for Outstanding Legal Slash Courtroom Program, an award that was introduced in 2008. Prior to Judge Judy, the award had gone to Christina's Court, Judge Janine Pirro, and Last Shot with Judge Gunn. However, none of those shows are highly rated or long running. Judge Judy's win in 2013 made it the first highly rated and long-running reality courtroom show to win an Emmy. The People's Court won in 2014 and 15, although Judge Judy reclaimed the crown in 2016 and 2017. In 2019, Judy was awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award for her contributions to television. We think rightfully so. It's the result of a hard-working team she considers family. Most of the people here have been continuously employed in a steady job for almost a quarter of a century. Everyone loves Bird, even though he doesn't really do a whole lot. He brings in the litigants, introduces Judy, and then just kind of stands there while occasionally laughing and soldering over to get a piece of paper. Starting in 1986, Bird began working as a court officer in Manhattan's family court. It was here that he sporadically worked with Judge Judy, and the two quickly formed a harmonious relationship. However, Bird moved to California in 1990 to begin to work as a U.S. Marshal. Upon learning that his old pal Judy was getting her own show, Bird sent her a congratulatory letter and offered his service. To his surprise, Judy accepted, and the two have been working together ever since. So I, I was a court officer in Manhattan Family Court where Judge Judy was a judge. And amongst the judges I worked with, because we switched parts all the time. Um... There are a lot of notable TV hosts out there, but none were as well paid as Judith Scheinlin in 2018. Turns out there is fantastic money in being a reality show judge. In 2018, Judy beat out Steve Harvey, Ryan Seacrest, Dr. Phil, and Ellen DeGeneres to claim the top spot in earning $147 million in pre-tax income. Granted, this was an especially great year for Judy, as she sold the rights to Judge Judy to CBS for $100 million, greatly inflating her typical $47 million salary. However, $47 million a year is certainly nothing to scoff at. According to Forbes, Judy currently has a net worth of over $400 million, making her the 48th richest self-made woman in the country. She is 
the number one show and the number one, not just highest paid woman, highest paid personality in all of television. That's nice. All of television. And that's it for our list. If it was up to us, I think we'd all keep Judge Judy running, well, for the rest of time. But Judy has certainly paid her dues and will live on as a legacy forever. Plus, there's always those YouTube compilations I mentioned before that you can check out. Once again, if you're a big fan of Judge Judy, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And we will catch you guys in the next video.